So what I want to talk next is how do we solve the page rank equation? How do we actually compute uh, the vector r? The idea here is to use the method called uh, power iteration. And what we would like to do is we'd like to do the following, right? Given a graph on n nodes, we want to use an iterative, we will use an iterative procedure that will uh, update over time our rank vector r. Um, and the idea will be that we, we start the procedure by assigning each node some initial uh, random uh, page rank score. And then we are going to repeat our iterative process until this uh, vector r stabilizes. And the way we are going to measure whether it stabilizes, we'll say here is our previous estimate. Now t runs over the iteration of our algorithm, where we say this is our previous estimate in the vector r, this is our new estimate in vector r, and if the coordinates, the entries in the vector don't change too much, they change less than epsilon, then we are done. And the equation we are going to iterate is written here. Basically, node j will say, my new estimate of my importance is simply take the estimate of the nodes i that point to me uh, from the previous step, you know, divide each one by the L degree of node i, sum them up, and that is my new importance. And we are just going to iterate this um, you know, a couple of times, and it's uh, it's guaranteed to converge to the uh, to this uh, to the solution, which is essentially saying this is guaranteed to find me the leading eigenvector uh, of the underlying uh, matrix uh, M. So um, the method that does this, what I explained, is called power iteration, where um, basically the way we are going to do this, to just write it again in the very simple form, we initialize vector r, you know, let's call, in, call in initialization to be time zero, to be simply, uh, you know, every node has, let's say, the same importance, or you can assign random importances, and then we will simply iterate, you know, new estimate of r equals m times a previous estimate of r. And we are going to iterate this equation uh, for long enough until the, the, uh, en the entry-wise differences between estimate in the previous round and in the next round, when the sum of these differences uh, is uh, less than epsilon. And again, notice that this equation is exactly this equation, right? This is just written in two different ways, but it's exactly the same thing. Um, one last thing to say is you can use the what is called L1 norm, so the sum of the absolute differences here. You could also use, let's say, Euclidean norm, so some of the squares of absolute differences, uh, if you like. Um, and generally, it takes about 50 iterations. You have to compute about 50, uh, 50 you have to compute this product 50 times uh, before you reach this stationary distribution or this uh, limiting solution. So, Basically, you can compute page rank by a couple of uh, matrix vector multiplies uh, and you are done. And this is important because, you know, Google is computing this page rank every day over the entire web graph, right, of tens of billions of, uh, of nodes uh, and, I don't know, hundreds of billions of edges, right? So this is really, really scalable and you can, you can compute it on the, on the graph that uh, captures the entire web. So uh, to give you an example, Again, uh, power iteration method, you know, written again in a different way, our matrix M, our set of flow equations. Uh, and what I'm going to show you here is iterations of the algorithm where we set node importances to be simply uh, one third at the beginning. And now we multiply with matrix M. And you know, after we multiply once, here are the new values. We multiply the second time, here are the new values and you know, the third time, and as we keep multiplying the, the, uh, the value of values of vector r, then will converge to a stationary uh, vector so that m really equals, uh, r really equals m times r, um, and the final importances will be 6 over 15, 6 over 15, and 3 over 15. So it means y and a will have importance of uh, 6 over 15, and m will have a lower importance of uh, 3 over 15. So um, this, is, this is what PageRank is going to uh, give us. So now that we have uh, seen these equations and everything seems beautiful, uh, we need to ask a few questions. So first question is, does this converge? Second question is, does it converge to where we want? And the third question is, are the results reasonable? Right? So basically what I said right now is, 
create the graph uh, represented as this matrix M, run this uh, 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 iterative power iteration procedure, it will converge in about 50 steps and you will get your uh, vector R out of it. So let's look at this uh, a bit more uh, carefully. So it turns out that with what I explained so far, uh, there are two problems. The first problem is that some pages are what is called dead ends. They have no outlinks. And it turns out that for such web pages, the importance, the votes kind of leak out. I will tell you what I mean by that. And then there is also a second problem called uh, spy spider traps, uh, where all outlinks are within the same group and uh, the spider traps eventually absorb all, all importance. So let me now give you an example and you will see what's happening. So um, first spider traps. Uh, here in this case, right, we have A links to B and then B has a self loop. So if you run this, um, a power iteration over an adjacency matrix describing this graph, what will happen is that in the end, A will have um, importance zero and B will have importance one. And if you think of this, why is this happening is because wherever the random walker starts, uh, you know, it will traverse this edge and get into B and then it is just going to, to, to be stuck here in B forever. So really, you know, after some number of time, the random walker is, is in node B with probability one and can never go back to A. So this is called a spider trap because the random walker gets trapped and at the end, you know, this may be uh, uh, all the importance will be uh, kept here in B. And you can imagine this that, you know, even if you have a super huge graph here, eventually the random walker is going to traverse over this edge and then be stuck uh, forever in this uh, self loop. So that's the problem of spider traps. Um, and then here is the problem of dead ends. The problem of dead ends is now that node B has no outlink. And what this means that if you would simply create an adjacency matrix for this graph, run the power iteration, it would converge to all zeros. And intuitively why is this happening is that as soon as the random walker gets to node B, the random walker has nowhere to go. So it kind of falls off the cliff and, the, and it gets lost, right? And this way, the, the dead ends kind of this importance doesn't yet sum to one anymore, but it leaks out uh, of the graph. So um, this is, uh, these are two problems that we are going to address. Um, and you know, what is the solution? The solution is this notion of uh, random jumps or teleports. So the solution for spider traps is that we are going to change the random walk process a bit. So basically saying at every time the random walker will not only choose a link at random, but can also decide to teleport itself. So let me explain what this means. So we are going to have one parameter beta that will allow random walker to do one of the two choices. With the probability beta, you know, the random walker will decide and follow a link at random, the same way as we discussed um, so far. But with probability one minus beta, the random walker is going to jump, teleport to a random page. And the common values of beta usually are between 0.8 to 0.9. So it means that, you know, if a random walker gets st stuck in a spider trap, it will stay here for a few steps, but as eventually it will, it, will, it will be able to teleport out, right? Because with some smaller probability, the random walker will say, let me just randomly teleport to a random page. So it means that out of every web page, out of every node, there is a way for you to teleport yourself somewhere else, to basically randomly jump somewhere else. And this is um, how now spider traps are no longer the problem because you don't get uh, trapped. You can always uh, jump out. You can always teleport, you know, the Scotty can all you, always kind of beam you up. That's kind of the idea. Um, how about the dead ends? The, the, the way you do this is also with teleports. Essentially what you say, if you come to a dead end, if you come to node M and there's nowhere for you to go, what you, what you do is you simply teleport with probability one, right? So, uh, you know, why were the dead, dead ends the problem? Dead ends were the problem because M has no outlinks. So our column of this uh, matrix M, the uh, column stochastic adjacency matrix is not, is the, the, the column stochasticity is uh, violated because column for node M does not sum to one because M has no outlinks. 
So what do we do is we fix this by basically saying when you arrive to know them, you can you can randomly teleport wherever you want. You can jump to any node. So this means in some sense now now M is connected to all other nodes in the network, including you, uh, itself. And um, you know the random walker can choose any of these links with equal probability. And this uh, solves the problem of dead ends. It essentially eliminates them. So why do teleports solve the problem, right? Why are, why are dead ends and spider traps a problem and why do teleports solve both of them, right? Spider traps in some sense are not a mathematical problem in a sense that the, eigenve the eigenvector is still well defined, the power iteration is going to, to converge, everything is fine uh, mathematically. But the problem is that the page rank score is not what we want, right? We don't want to say there is one page on the web that is important, uh, has all the importance and everyone else is zero important, right? So the solution here is to add teleports. This means the random walker never gets uh, trapped in a spider trap um, and it will be able to teleport itself out in a finite number of steps, which means that all the nodes on the web will now have some importance. So this basically is, um, solves us uh, this particular issue. So spider traps are not a mathematical problem, but are a problem that page rank uh, value is not, becomes not what we want. And then dead ends are a problem mathematically because our matrix M is not column stochastic anymore uh, and our initial assumptions are not met. So power iteration as a method does not, does not, uh, does not work uh, and does not converge. So the solution here is to make the column, the matrix column stochastic by always teleporting when there is nowhere to go, right? Whenever you come to a node without any outlinks, you always randomly teleport. Um, and this is now means that basically the same solution of teleports both give, gives us page rank the way we wanted to define it intuitively and also fixes the underlying mathematical problems that all these concepts that I discussed um, are well defined. So what is the final solution or the Google solution to this problem? Um, the solution is that at each step, the random walker has two options. You know, it flips a coin and with some probability beta, it's going to follow an outlink, outlink at random. And with the remaining probability, it's going to jump to a random page. So the way now our page rank equation that was defined by um, uh, Sergey and Brin um, or Page and Brin uh, back uh, in uh, 1998 uh, is the following. We say the importance of node J equals the beta times the importances of node i that uh, point to it, right, divided by their out degrees, plus one minus beta one over n. So the way you can think of this is to say, if a random, if a, how likely is a random walker to be at node j right now? It, with probability beta, it decided to follow an, uh, an outlink, and this means it was at node i with, what, with some probability r sub i, and it decided to follow an out, outlink towards uh, node j, following, you know, picking the right outlink out of the d sub i outlink has the probability one over d sub i. So that's what's happening here. And then we say, oh, and also uh, the random walker could come to the node j um, by basically teleporting. One minus beta is probability of teleporting. Now, how likely is the random walker to land at node j? Node J is just one out of N nodes. So the probability that it landed at specific node J is one over N. And uh, this is essentially uh, the page rank uh, equation and the iteration one can run. Uh, just note that this formulation here assumes uh, M has no dead ends. The way you can do is you can pre-process uh, matrix M to remove all the dead ends um, and or, or, or explicitly follow random teleports with probability one out of dead ends. So uh, that's how you can uh, fix this. But you can see again, this is very fast and very simple uh, to iterate. So I just gave you the equation in this, um, the uh, flow based formulation in some sense. You can also write it in a matrix form where you say my new matrix uh, uh, G, right? So this should be G equals beta times the stochastic matrix M plus one minus beta uh, times the, uh, the matrix that has all the entries uh, one over n. So this is the random teleportation 
matrix and this is the, the transition matrix over the edges of the graph. Um, and then you have this again recursive equation that r equals g times r and you can iterate this, uh, power, power iteration will still work. Um, and if you ask what should be the beta value that I, that I set, in practice we take beta to be between 0.8 uh, and 0.9, which means that you, the random walker takes about five steps on the average before it decides to jump. Uh, just to be very clear, the random walk is just the intuition and we never simulate the random walk, right? In the previous lecture, we actually said, let's simulate the random walk. Here, we don't simulate the random walk, but uh, in some sense, we think of it as being run infinitely long. And then we say, we show that actually we can compute this infinitely long random walk by basically solving this recursive equation, by basically computing the, the leading eigenvector of this uh, uh, graph transformed matrix uh, that I call uh, G uh, here. So the random walk is just an intuition because we never truly, um, we never truly uh, simulate it. So to show you how this works, here is my uh, little graph on three nodes. Uh, here's the matrix M. Uh, notice that uh, the node M is a, is a spider trap. So what do I do now is I add also this um, random teleport uh, links. So I have this matrix uh, uh, one over N. Let's say that my beta is 0.8. So now my new stochastic uh, transition matrix G is written here, right? It's 0.8 times the uh, matrix of link transitions plus 0.2 the uh, matrix of random jumps, where basically you can think of this that every column says, if a, no, if a random surfer is at a given node, then this is the probability distribution where the random surfer is going to jump. And if you add these two together, you get a new um, transition matrix now that includes both traversing over the links of the graph as well as randomly jumping. Uh, here is how you can think of this in terms of transition probabilities. These are now in some sense transition probabilities of a random walker, random surfer. Um, and then you can multiply uh, R with G multiple times. Here is the R0, and now we are multiplying it over and over and over again. And you know, after some number of iterations, it's going to converge, and it converges to 7 over 33, 5 over 33, and 21 over 33. So it means that node M in this graph will be the most important, followed by Y, followed by A, All right? And the reason why M is so important is because it's kind of a spider trap, but we also are able to teleport out. Now, if intuitively this is, uh, you know, no dem kind of collects too much importance, you can increase uh, value of beta and the importance of node M is going to uh, decrease. And just to show you an idea how this, uh, how this looks like in, in a bit more interesting graph, this is a graph where node size corresponds to its page rank weight. And also there is a number that tells you what's the page rank score of the node. And what do you notice, for example, why is page rank so cool? It's cool because, for example, first notice all nodes have non-zero importance. So even these nodes here um, that have no inlinks, they still have some importance because the random jumper can always jump to them. Another thing notice is that, for example, node B has a lot of inlinks, and it, so that's why it has high importance. Right? Notice that, for example, node E has, you know, it has five inlinks, six inlinks, and uh, node B also has six inlinks. But because node E gets most of the inlinks from these unimportant pages, its importance is, you know, eight versus B, who is 38. So B is much more important because it gets uh, inlinks from these other nodes that have higher importance than these uh, little blue nodes. Um, another thing to notice is, for example, node C has only one inlink, but because it gets it from this super important node B, its importance is also very, very high, right? You see, for example, also that uh, here node E has uh, some, uh, uh, you know, some importance, uh, D has less, uh, F has less, uh, they both have the same importance D and F because they both get one inlink from node E. So notice how these uh, importances are very nuanced and they take a lot of different considerations into account that all make sense in a sense of I want a lot of inlinks, I want inlinks from uh, important nodes, even if I have one inlink but somebody very important links to me, that means I'm very important um, and so on and so forth. So uh, this is why 
this notion of page rank is so, so useful. And also there is a lot of mathematical beauty um, uh, behind its, uh, its definition and we can efficiently compute it uh, for very large scale uh, graphs. So to summarize, we talked about how do we solve the page rank uh, scores. We solve them by iterating this uh, equation r equals g times r um, and this can be efficiently computed using power iteration of the stochastic matrix g um, and adding uniform teleportation solves both the issues with dead ends as well as the issue with spider traps.